table tennis ball falls from the height h on the plane inclined at the angle of alpha and elastically bounce off it. Find the distances x1, x2, xn between points where the ball hits on the plane. First, let's do a task analysis. We have a ball falling from height h. The ball then elastically bounce and continue to move until elastically bounce again, and so on. So, what kind of motion do we have right here? Obviously, it is two-dimensional motion, very similar to projectile motion. But then, what is the difference? I will give you an answer by explaining the setup for this motion. As a first thing, and most important thing here, is where to set up the axis. The, the x-axis will be parallel to inclined plane, and the y-axis will be vertical to inclined plane. And because of this, we will have some problems with the earth acceleration g. Why? So it's obvious, unlike usual, right here, g is not parallel to the y-axis. For that reason, we will have to deal with the x and y components of the acceleration g. And here you can see the x component of the acceleration g and of course here is the the y component of the acceleration g. And now it is obvious that unlike usual case for the projectile motion, the motion along the x-axis is not any more motion with constant speed, but the motion with acceleration. So, with this kind of setup, our goal is to find the places where the ball hits the inclined plane and, of course, the distances between them. Here you can see the first two distances denoted by the green and the blue lines. Now, it is obvious why we choose such positions of x and y axis. So, <coughs> Let's 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 begin and find x1, x2, and, and so on. Uh, if we know the height h and angle alpha, we need to find x1, x2, and so on. But the first thing that we want to find is the velocity of the ball at the moment when the first bounce appears. This velocity is at the angle alpha with regard to y-axis. It is because the ball elastically bounces off the plane. The magnitude of this velocity is equal to the magnitude of the velocity by which the ball hits the plane. Again, it is because the ball elastically bounces off. Let's denote this magnitude with v0, and it is equal to square root of 2gh. It is well known results for the instantaneous speed from the free fall motion, of course. Uh, we take v0 because it will be initial velocity in our case. The instantaneous velocity can be obtained using one of the kinematical equation v is equal to v0 plus g times t. This is a vector equation and we want scalar equations. 
So we need the x and y components of the velocity v. So the x component of the velocity v, so called vx, is equal to v0x, which is x component of the initial velocity v0, plus gx, or x, x component of the acceleration g, and times t. Using that v0x is v0 sine alpha, and gx is g sine alpha, we will have this expression for the x component of the instantaneous velocity vx. Similarly, we will have the expression for the vy. But as you can see here, we need to care about direction of the acceleration along the y-axis. That's why here we have a minus. Okay, that is all for now about instantaneous velocity. We will use those expressions to determine the velocity after the second bounce. Right now, we want to determine the distance x1. And it can be done by using relation for the position vector r equal to v0 t plus g t squared over 2. Of course, this is a vector equation and we need x and y components. So y component is equal to y component of the initial velocity v0y times t plus y component of the acceleration g times t squared over 2. So using that v0y is v0 cosine alpha and gy is g cosine alpha. Here is the final expression for the position y. Similarly, here is the final expression for the position x. Then, how can we find x1? Well, using the expression for position y, we can calculate needed time for the ball to go from position 0 to position 1. Again, how? Because in those two positions, position 0 and position 1, you can see that the position y is actually equal to 0. So, using this equation and the fact that y is equal to 0, we can calculate time t needed for the ball to go from position 0 to position 1. Let's denote this time with t1. Okay, the y is equal to 0, then from the equation for the position y, we have this quadratic equation to solve. Rewriting the equation in another form, we see two solutions, as it should be. The first one is for t1 equal to 0, that is for the position 0. And the second one is when the expression in parentness is equal to 0. That is when t1 is equal to 2v0 over g. Therefore, replacing t with the 2v0 over g into the equation for position x, we will have that x1 is equal to 8 times h 
times sine alpha. Oh, very well. Now let's go and find x2. That is a distance between the position 2 and the position 1. To find x2, we will use the same strategy as before. First, we need the instantaneous velocity of the ball between position 2 and position 1. Then, we will write x and y components of that velocity. Afterwards, we will use the, comp the components of the position vector to obtain needed time, which we will use to calculate the, the x, the x2. So, let's start with repeating what we said about instantaneous velocity between position 0 and position 1. Instantaneous velocity is given by the equation v equal to initial velocity v0 plus gt. The x and y components of the instantaneous velocity are vx and vy. But we already calculated the time for the motion of the ball and it is equal to 2v0 over g. So the x and y component of the velocity of the ball when it hits the inclined plane for the second time are 3v0 sine alpha and minus v0 cosine alpha. To, visual, to visualize this, we are talking about velocity you see here. But our initial velocity for the second part of the motion, or the motion between position 1 and position 2, is actually this velocity. Of course, we took into account elastic bounces. For that reason, y component of our initial velocity will not have a minus before v0. Now, when we have the components uh, of the initial velocity, we will use again the equation for position vector of the ball counting from the position 1. Therefore, we will have those positions y and x are given by these expressions. Again, using the fact that in those two positions y is equal to 0, we can find time t needed for the ball to go from position 1 to position 2. And again, it is 2 v0 over g. Replacing t with 2 v0 over g in equation for position x, we will obtain that x2 is 2 times 8 h sine alpha. If we repeat the same procedure one more time, we will have x3 equal to 3 times 8 h sine alpha. For the nth case, it is equal to n times 8 h sine alpha. Or, in general case, x n equal to n times x1.